Morning. Morning, Coach. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, first question will come from Ross Martin. Ross, go ahead. Hey, Coach. I'm going to continue on with the offensive line. Um, what did you? How would you evaluate their performance, and and how did you move around Azudu from from tackle to guard and back and forth, and kind of how he fits into this offensive line and moving forward? So I would say uh, Joshua Azudu is uh, he. Just, just, just his physical presence on the offensive line. It gave us another guy up front that uh, can be a dominant mover up front in the run game and does a really good job in pass protection. It also gives us a guy that is, uh, he's versatile and he can play numerous positions. And so, you know, Coach Cyril uses him to spell a number of different guys, including uh, Tucker and, and Montillas and, so he's just a guy right now that's – he's our everything guy, and um, he's an every-down starter, so, and he can help us spell the guards and the tackles. What do you think the uh, offensive line did really well in run blocking? I mean, what, what was clear on tape that they did well? You know, I, I think uh, we got what we expected to get defensively, so that always helps. I think, um, you know, and I say this all the time about our team, it's a well-coached team. You know, and, and, I, and, and it, you see that because every single week this team gets better, even dating back to last year. And the offensive line is no different. You know, they're, they're a representation of, I think, where our team's going. They get better every single week. You know, and we run what we run. And so every time we get a new scenario, we, we adapt it. We adapt our run plays to what we're seeing. Coach Cyril's will map out, you know, how we want to handle – that particular stunt or pressure or what we're going to do against the run game that we run every week. And, and the guys, you know, they're veterans now. They, these aren't uh, – we didn't have a lot of returning starters last year. This year, we've, we've got everybody. And, I, you know, I think the, the veteran nature of the offensive line is a huge help. And I think the fact that they get better every week is a huge help. And they're playing with a lot of confidence right now. And then the other thing I would tell you, Ross, is, uh, you know, we practice with tempo in every single practice. And, and the guys don't even realize how fast we're running the offense in the game. And, and truthfully, and I've said this before, too, they're the ones that are saying, hey, crank it up. Let's go. You know, call it faster. Get the play in. Let's, let's rock and roll. And when you have your linemen of all people doing that uh, on, your offense, on the offensive side of the football, we're, we're, we're in a good place right now. Great. Thanks, Coach. Okay, let's go over to Alyssa Ray. Hey, Coach, how have you seen Javante Williams and Michael Carter improve even as the season is going on? And it seems like their confidence is getting greater each game, and it seems like they're also feeding off each other. Well, you're supposed to say these things about your players because you want your program to be this way. But the two of them, they're two of the most unselfish football players I've ever been around. And, uh, and we have a lot of that on our team. You know, the receivers cheer for the receivers. The tight ends are – high-fiving each other, the, the, you know, the quarterback, Sam's helping the other guys. The other guys are helping Sam in practice. I mean, there's just so much uh, unity right now and unselfishness. And when you have the diverse amount of talent that we have, you, you need to be unselfish. And you just have to understand that any given week may be your week to explode. And it may be your week, like the receivers this week, and they, they made some plays in the passing game, but they blocked their tails off on the perimeter for Javante Williams and, uh, you know, and Michael Carter. And the, the two of them are uh, the biggest fans of each other. People see that on our football team, the staff and the players. They feed off it. I think they, they follow suit. And, and uh, you know, that's kind of our attitude from position to position. So as long as that keeps continuing, I think you're going you're gonna to see us be successful. And I think you're going to see us be able to spread the ball around to a lot of different different players. Thanks, Coach. Okay, Jacob Turner, go ahead. Hey, Phil. Um, Mac mentioned this in his press conference, but he talked about how you guys were a perfect five for five in the red zone, minus Sam Howell, you know, obviously kneeling towards the end of the game. But was there anything specifically that, that worked well for you guys and why you guys ended up being so successful down there? Well, this year we've been a lot more like the second half of, of last year. The first half of last year, uh, we, we made probably more mental mistakes in the red zone area than, you know, we would like to have down there. We also uh, – 
we probably didn't run the ball, football as effectively down there as we would have liked. Um, that, that improved and got better in the second half of the season. And our red zone offense improved and got better down there second half of the season. I think really we're just continuing the red zone momentum from the end of last year. And I'm very, very happy with uh, the attitude of our offense, particularly up front when we're running the ball in the red zone. Um, and, and I think we're doing a better job right now 11 people across the board executing from a, from an M&A a missed assignment standpoint. So we're, we're a little more focused. We're making fewer mistakes. And obviously, we're more physical up front. That's, those are the two biggest differences in the red zone right now. All right, let's go over to Gregory Hall. Coach, Florida State has allowed 6.5 yards per play. Obviously, they've played Notre Dame and in Miami. But I was just curious what you've seen out of there out of their defense heading into this week? You know, stats are, are deceiving sometimes. I, I think uh, any, any stat line you look at, whether it's the cumulative from the season or from the previous game, if you just look at the numbers, you can feel pretty confident about maybe being able to run the football or being able to throw the football. And, you know, if, if this season hasn't proved that every single game is its own entity, you know, you've got all kinds of uh, – results out there right now that have been uh, very surprising to a lot of people. You know, I think a lot of people are picking teams that haven't won. There have been a lot of upsets already in such a, a short season. And all of that, I think, is uh, generated by, you know, this different season that we're having. But the focus that our guys have right now of just locking into each individual game, you know, you utilize the statistics and the tendencies and all the reports that you get to try to formulate your game plan. But, the, you know, probably the more important thing and the point I'm making is every single game is its own world. That's something Sam and I, Sam Howell and I talk about all the time. Every single play is its own play, regardless of where we threw the ball or who we handed it to on that same exact play the last 10 reps. This one is its own play, and we've got to do whatever the defense is giving us. And so each game is the same way. So I, it, it'll be interesting to see how uh, Florida State chooses to defend us. You know, they've shown uh, a few different approaches this season. I think a lot of that has to do with who they're playing, obviously. And it'll be interesting to see how they view us and how they choose to defend us. And, and then, obviously, we'll have to attack it accordingly. Looking, watching on film, what players have stood out? Because, obviously, Florida State always has a bunch of athletes uh, on their defense. Well, they're huge to begin with. They're long. Uh, they're rangy. Uh, just across the board, you've got a few guys that are a little bigger, a few a little smaller, but they average 290 pounds across the D-line. One defensive end is 6'7", the other one's 6'5". Um, so we're going to have to do a good job in the pass game of keeping their hands down. In the run game, obviously, we need to continue to get movement, uh, which, which we have gotten better at, and we did a really good job on Saturday of uh, finishing off runs. Um, Fans don't necessarily appreciate some of those little things, but when you have linemen finishing run blocks three and four yards down the field, you know, there's, you have an appreciation for how hard they're working because it's not easy to do. And, and those are clearing, that's clearing grass for our running backs. And I think they're special. When we can get them across the line of scrimmage, they're special. We don't have to coach our running backs on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Coach Gillespie does a great job of preparing them. Um, but once they pass the line of scrimmage, we can sit back and watch them go be athletes. And that's, that's really what we're trying to get out of our run game. And so I, I, I think that's the approach is going to be, what are they giving us? And, and let's take it. And, I, and I've said it 100 times. If we have to throw at 70, if we have to run at 70, whatever it is they're giving us, that's what we want to execute and do without MAs and with some physicality. And I think it gives us a chance to win offensively. Thank you. Okay, CL Brown, go ahead. Hi, right, Phil. Um, I was curious what you would attribute the success of the opening drives. You guys are three for three um, scoring touchdowns each game. Uh, what, what would you attribute that success to so far? You know, I, I'd like to say it's, it's the staff. I, I think uh, the game planning and, and uh, running the best plays early on, the, the, the ones we like the most. I always ask our guys for their top ten plays. A lot of that input from them goes into, uh, you know, maybe our little checklist for the opening drive. But the truth of the matter is our guys are really the biggest reason. The players, uh, 
they prepare themselves well during the week. So we have confidence on Friday and on Saturday morning heading into the game. Um, we, we've had uh, four, uh, three really good pregames right now. And I think the focus in the locker room is where we want it. And when all of those things are heading in that, in that direction, in a positive direction, typically you, you come out of the blocks and you play well early. And, and we've been able to do that. And so hopefully that continues here. All right, let's go to Dina King. Go ahead, Dina. Hey, Coach. Daz Newsom had his best game of the early of this, this season. Just want your thoughts on how important it was him getting a couple scores and getting him kind of uh, on his uh, uh, routine. So I heard everything you said except the name. Who did you bring up? Dad, Daz. Daz oh, Newsom. Well, you know, Daz is uh, – I, I blame myself uh, for – the first game. I mean, we, we really need to get him the football more than we did. And um, so I, I've got to hear more, more plays for Daz Newsom, uh, for De'Ami Brown. You know, I will say in defense of my, it's hard to get the ball to so many good players in every single game. Now that's our goal is to spread it out and force the defense to have to defend everybody. Um, but I, but I blame myself. I don't think I did a good enough job from a play calling standpoint of getting getting the football in Daz's hand. And we were able to do that this game. Uh, Sam Howell made some really, really good decisions with regards to, to getting the ball to Daz. And obviously good things happen when he has the football. So we're going to continue, obviously, to do that. And I, I think the more Daz touches the football, uh, the more explosive he'll be this season. Thank you. All right, Andrew Jones, go ahead. Hey, Coach, a couple weeks ago, Michael Carter told us that one of the differences in him this year as opposed to last year is that he's quicker, faster, and more explosive. Can you add anything to that about why he's having the kind of success he is that has changed from the player he was before? It's, it's you know, Coach has to stand it over here, as a matter of fact, and I, I credit him with a lot of the, the athletic and the physical – and the speed and the change of direction development that we have with our guys. I mean, I, I do. I think we have the best strength coach in the country. Love our staff. And when you can visibly see a difference, you know, and I, and I know who you're asking about, and I'm talking about him specifically, but the team, when you can visibly see a physical uh, difference in our guys from last year to this year, you, you know the program's working. Our guys are faster. Their change of direction is better. Michael Carter's quicker. Diami's quicker. Daz is quicker. Sam Howell is more flexible in changing direction. So I just think that overall program for all of us has, has uh, all of our players has had a, a direct impact on their performance on the field. And I, I really think that's the honest answer to the question you asked me. I think it's the players' work ethic and the time and effort that they put into the program. And I think we're, you know, we're doing a great job developing them in the offseason. Aside from that, what part of his game has he improved the most on? Oh, just probably overall technique and his knowledge of the game. I think uh, having veterans come back, Andrew, is it, – it, you know, they just come back with so much more experience in all of the different scenarios. And, you know, you, you see a lot of them handling uh, more progressive situations um, better and differently and more effectively than they did last year. And – you know, I, I think that's his biggest improvement from last season to this season. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right. Last one for Coach uh, Brendan Marks. Go ahead, Brendan. Hey, Phil. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, obviously, three games is, you know, a big enough sample size to start to draw some conclusions for you guys. And, you know, we talk about the improvements on the offensive line and, and with the running backs and Sam's accuracy, obviously. But I'm just wondering – are there things that you still don't know about this offense? Like what, if you had to pick something, what would be the, the biggest thing you don't yet know about this group, whether it's one position or sort of cumulatively across the board? You know, nothing really comes to mind other than uh, I, I would like to see us get Garrett Walston and the tight ends involved more in what we're doing. And they're part of the plan every week. I mean, they really are. Um, you know, we hit Garrett early on on a, on a big third down. He kept the drive alive for us. Um, we had a nice touchdown at Syracuse. And there are some things in there that we've actually put in and designed for that position and for Garrett specifically. But situation of the game and uh, calling one of those particular plays and the ball winds up going elsewhere because somebody else is open before that, that, that that's really the only reason uh, he hasn't seen it more. And I – I think his role and the role of the tight end and the offense is, 
probably the thing I'd like to see change a little bit. I'd like to get them more involved in what we're doing. Outside of that, we feel comfortable about our personnel. We have confidence in each other. We, we like where we're going up front. We obviously love our backfield. You know, our signal caller, you, you, you can't find a better one. I mean, and, and we're talented at receivers. So I, I've got to find a way not to screw this whole thing up and we'll get our tight end the football a little bit more and, and let those kids just, just go play. And, and, you know, it's it's about getting one week better every single week. And right now our only focus is Florida State. We've got to be four weeks better for that game. If we do that, that gives us the best opportunity to compete on Saturday. Thank you. Coach Longo, thanks for your time today. You got it. Thank you, fellas. Y'all have a good week.